So we're going to go back to the deputants for the bike network. We're at Catherine Holden. And Catherine, just before you go forward, and you're going to be the next speaker. Councillor Parker, you had a request to the committee. Yes, Mr. Speaker, uh, with the indulgence of everyone in the room, we have another another request. Uh, we have one deputant who who has a particular disability, and in light of, uh, with with that in mind, uh, I said I would ask if she could go uh, as soon as possible after lunch, so that she could get on with other things. So I want one one more request for an indulgence. And is that friendly raisin? Yes, it is. Okay, so your motion is to vary the procedure and to allow. Brenly Raisin to speak after Catherine Holden? Yes. So that requires a vote of the committee. All those in favor? Opposed? So after yourself, Catherine, it will be Brenly, then it's Dominic Wong. Uh, thank you. Please proceed. Good afternoon, uh, council members and Mr. Chair. I uh, am a member of the Bay Clover Hill Community Association and our boundaries are Charles Street West, Young Street, College Street, and Queens Park Crescent West. We are one of the uh, community associations through whose area this bike, uh, segregated bike lane plan will pass. We support, as an, a community and as an organization, we do support segregated bike lanes because of the increased safety to bicycle riders, especially those who are a little less courageous. We also sympathize with the very experienced bicycle riders who will find this quite trying from time to time. In our community, we do have bike lanes painted on Wellesley Street. They came about as a result of action in our community. They were painted, the paint trucks pulled into our community in November of 2008, and the lines were painted on the road. A number of the um, sections of the bike lane are quite unsafe as they now exist. On the overhead, you will see that I have put certain dots. One quite far to the right represents church, and Wellesley. That, uh, the next one uh, shows Young and Wellesley and the third one shows Bay and Wellesley. All of these intersections have been significantly reduced to allow the bike lanes to be put through. Even though sharrows have been employed, the um, lanes for turning and uh, both right and left have been affected and a segregated bike, bike lane will further cause issues in narrowing of the road. Young and Wellesley is especially narrow with uh, poles on the sidewalk. There is one space that is probably no more than three feet wide for the bulk of the very large number of pedestrians who pass through there to the Wellesley subway station. So then we come over to Queen's Park, Queen's Park North, which is rented to the City of Toronto by the, by the University of Toronto. And the plan shows, although I think it is not carved in stone, that the bike lanes will go directly through the park and join Hoskins. When the bike lanes were painted, you can see on my map that they stop at Wellesley and the exit from Queen's Park Crescent West. That is because the University of Toronto refused to let the bike lanes enter their campus and exit under sol the Soldier's Arch so they could enter Hoskins at that point. I quite sympathize with that. The arch is sort of a, a special place and it does not have a lot of space for bike lanes. However, the bike lane has stopped at Wellesley and that exit from Queen's Park Crescent West and there it sits. We have no way to get there. I am here to offer a possibility of an alternate route. We, I have talked to a number of people, Andrea Garcia, Lucas Pulaski, others uh, at the city and in our community. We believe that there could be a two-way lane from Wellesley to Hoskins along the west side of Queen's Park North. That would be the southbound 
bikes would be uh, going with the traffic and the northbound right beside it would be on the park side which would give them a bit of security from the oncoming traffic. At this present time all cyclists that want to go to Hoskins pretty much end up at that light at Hoskins and Queens Park Crescent West. Going through the park is a terribly dangerous situation. The park is heavily used by many many groups and it's very densely crowded with pedestrians and picnickers and so on on most weekends. The other item is that the cyclists, if it's not a busy uh, park event, go very fast. So I am saying I would like to offer the alternative of going around the park. The park itself is up for rebuilding. We have some money in place. We have a landscape plan about to embark. It should be put into that plan as around the park, not through the park. This Thank is our heritage you. park with probably the oldest tree Thank in the you, city. Sandra. Please help us keep it that way. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Dominic Wong. I don't see Dominic. Sorry, friendly reason. I didn't move it in the list. For the accommodation. And then Dominic. I wanted to say that I live downtown and I cycle downtown approximately 150 kilometers a week, all year round, without adequate bi-directional, continuous and cleared bike lanes. I cycle by taking the lane, which is actually the safe and legal thing to do. I am the traffic. This conversation for me is lost. I am part of the traffic. This plan is mostly for recreational, not urban cyclists. Ravines and high road corridors are nowhere where I live or need to go and will never feel safe as a woman cyclist. I don't understand the purpose. If I wanted to go mountain climbing, I'll go mountain climbing. I'm trying to get to point A to point B. The proposed network of circling the core is just that. It's circling the core. It's a good start, but it isn't actually anywhere. I have to get to that outside of the core to use the bike lanes. Um, I've traveled and I've cycled in many other cities, like Montreal, like Washington DC, Vancouver, and even Minneapolis. They're places that are all a pleasure to ride and be because of cycling infrastructure. And for example, Montreal uses its parks all the time to travel t from one corridor to another. That's how you get through and that's how you do it safely. Um, unlike here, I need to use my whistle all the time. I'm yelled at on a continuous basis to get out of the car's way or worse, the car attempts to push me out of the lane on the false belief they will move faster if I'm not there when I'm traveling at the same speed or faster on a downtown street. To conclude, I will continue to ride, but others might not, without adequate biking structure. Bikes are part of the traffic mix in the city, and we're growing in numbers, and we're here to stay. Thank you.